All right, folks. You remember when, uh, before the season started, the schedule came out and we realized we wouldn't be seeing the Patriots until like week 13, week 16, towards the end of the season. And a lot of people were saying, man, I think the AFC East battle might come down to those final weeks. You know, that 16th week might might be important. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? The Bills were just demolishing all the AFC last year. And the Patriots weren't doing diddly, you know? Like, what, what makes you think Mac Jones and... And the rest of the guys there are going to be anything against the Buffalo Bills. I thought it was crazy. Well, here we are, week 13, and it is easily the biggest regular season game that the Buffalo Bills will be playing in in recent memory in in a long, long time. Let's talk about why that is. And now the Bills are on the rise again. Alrighty, folks, welcome back to another episode of Good Neighbor Sports. As always, I'm your host, Austin Hinton, and if you're new here, we talk Buffalo Bills football, so if you like that kind of thing, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. It's scientifically proven to make the Buffalo Bills win. I mean, look back at the previous videos and look back at the previous losses from the Buffalo Bills. I mean, it's... It makes sense. But before we talk about this New England Patriots matchup week 13, let's talk about that Thanksgiving Day game against the Saints really quickly. First of all, it was a must-win game against the crippled New Orleans Saints team. Uh, We had to win that game. And I'm glad that we did it in the fashion that we did. Uh, We just blew them out uh, on national television. Great performance by Josh Allen, nearly like 100% completion. He was like 82% with a couple picks. First one wasn't his fault, or I don't know which one in order. One of them wasn't his fault, one of them was. Uh, The one that was was pretty ugly, and just Josh Allen. You know, you take the good with the bad with Josh. He's going to make some big plays for you. He's also going to make some boneheaded moves. That's just Josh Allen. Other than that, he was pretty much on point. There was like a drop. I mean, I know, and I'll put the, if I can find the video, there's this wide open, wide open throw that he just missed because he was scrambling. And I think he's scrambling, obviously, because the O-line can't really give him much time in the pocket. If he had an extra second or two, I mean, two is asking a lot, but if he had an extra one second, that's a touchdown, 100%, no problem. I mean, that's just one thing Josh is going to have to learn. I'm sure he saw that on film, and he's going to be looking for it again against this much better Patriots defense. Again, Ed Oliver looked great. He's having his breakout season. He looked phenomenal, and hopefully we can get that again against the Patriots, but he's having his breakout season. Good for him. Mario Addison did great on Thanksgiving, and Dawson Knox had himself a game. He should have had a bigger game if it wasn't for that illegal receiver downfield BS. It would have been a three touchdown game for uh, Dawson Knox. He's killing it out there. But we all know why this game sucked. And uh, it's because we are, will be without Tredavious White for the remainder of the season and probably up until this time next year, or maybe like November. Probably won't get him early in, this, in September. It sucks. He, if, if you go down the list of irreplaceable guys, you got Josh Allen. You got Trey White. I mean, maybe you can put like Steph Diggs before him, but Trey White is is what this defense was built around, and it's a huge problem that he's out. Huge problem. Dane Jackson and Levi Wallace are really going to have to be stepping up today. Uh, Today, I say, but it's going to be Monday night, obviously. They're going to have to step up, and the whole defense in general is going to have to step up. It's like we're going to be playing with 10 guys instead of 11. But yeah, away from the Thanksgiving game, moving on to Monday night against the Patriots. This is the biggest regular season game that the Buffalo Bills have played in in a very, very long time. The Patriots have come out of nowhere you know I mean I wouldn't say come out of nowhere but it's the it's the evil empire coming back again they stink I hate when they're good Mac Jones has been pretty good it's looking like he's one of the better rookie pickups uh, in the draft especially quarterback position wise but I think a lot of it is just propped up success from his O-line being just stellar he's he's got a lot of time in the pocket he's the run game is really helping him a lot so it's kind of like what we wish we had except I don't want Mac Jones, I want Josh Allen, but I wish we had just that competent O-line run game that makes Josh Allen's day a little bit easier because Mac Jones has just got kind of an easy job, just like just like Tom Brady did. He's a dink and dunk, get those little plays off all the time, and maybe it's just Belichick, but man, I hate, ugh, I hate that style of football, but... And we got to go up against it on Monday, so we'll see how we can fare against it, but their run game is big. Our run defense is decent. Another reason why this game is so big, if the Patriots win, they're essentially a shoe-in for the first seed in the AFC. They will have a first-round bye in the playoffs. What? Before the season started, we were thinking, okay, Bills, first-round bye, first seed, no problem, getting in that play. I mean, don't even think about, you know, the Patriots or the Dolphins or anything, you know. It's not like the AFC East is going to be out of our reach. That's ours. It's on lock. 
It is flipped. If the Patriots win on Monday, they are projected like 62% chance to get that first seed, knocking the Buffalo Bills all the way down to 2%. It's ridiculous. If the Bills win, they'll be like 20% favorites to get that first seed knocking the Patriots down to like 16%, but it's huge for both teams. And as good as it is to have some competition in that AFC, uh, <laughs> I kind of wish we were like the Patriots for, for the last 20 years and that we just have three incompetent teams to play twice a year and we just always win and we always go to the playoffs. And I thought that's what was going to happen, but looks like the Patriots are still a freaking problem. So if there's one thing you can take away from this video, it's this. The Buffalo Bills need to beat the Patriots at least once if we want any shot at the playoffs under our own volition. If we lose to the Patriots twice, we're going to need help getting into the playoffs. Think when we first ended the drought, we needed Cincinnati's help to beat the Ravens to get into the playoffs. That's what might have to happen. How ridiculous is that? We go from almost getting to the Super Bowl last year to trembling a little bit to get into the playoffs. It's a problem. And, uh, man. This season has not been ideal. My magic number here is 11 wins. All right, I've been playing around with the ESPN playoff machine calculator thing, and that'll be a future video, but right now it's a little too early. There's still plenty of games to be played that it's just hard to estimate what's gonna happen, and there's a lot of just variables that can change things. But what I found is that if Buffalo can get to 11 wins, there's a large chance that they're in the playoffs. Uh, I, I mean, throw away that first seed. We're probably not going to get it unless we just go lights out the rest of the season, but we've been struggling. Obviously, we lost to the Jaguars. We lost to the Steelers week one. We lost to the Titans, barely. But, I mean, it's just the season's not going great. We, we got smoked by the Colts. It's rough. It's rough. Every team can be beaten. I mean, the, the Patriots struggle against Houston, so... I mean, there's there's problems all across the board. But yeah, if we go back to what the Buffalo Bills can do in the future, I'm allowing for two more losses between the Patriots twice, the Bucks, the Panthers, the Falcons, the Jets. We can win, we can lose two more. Uh, I hope it's not against the Patriots. That'll be a huge problem. I'm expecting the Bucks to give us a lot of problems. Um, and then, I mean, we've proven we can lose to teams like the Falcons and the Panthers and even the Jets. So we'll see. And you have no idea what the Bills are going to give you on a week to week basis. They're like the most volatile team in NFL history. Up, down, up, down. They're top of the world one week. Next week, they're laying an egg against the Jaguars. Top of the world one week. Next week, they're laying an egg against the Colts. And now they're top of the world on Thanksgiving. Hopefully they don't continue that trend and lay an egg against the Patriots. I will be there in person and I do not want to see my third loss at home. That would stink. But here we go. Let's do a quick little uh, little rundown of what, we're, what we can expect to see. Although we just mentioned that we have no expectations for what we can see because Buffalo is like this. But let's see what we can expect. The Patriots defense is pretty damn good uh, as of thus far. They're very opportunistic little vultures. They're going to be picking up those balls off the ground. They're going to be picking off bad throws. If we make mistakes, they're going to capitalize on them and then they're going to score. That's just the Patriots way. We've known it for 20 plus years and I, ugh, I don't want to deal with it. Don't want to deal with it. It's going to be a very big test for our offense. That's for sure. Our offense has been struggling. Usually it's our offense, especially last year, that we can crutch on. We can lean on and our defense is the one kind of picking up the slack. But this year we're leaning on our defense and now we're wondering if our offense can, can pick up the slack. It's a big test for our offense this week. Overall, the Patriots defense is third in pass defense and actually first uh, within the past three games when it comes to yards allowed, stuff like that. Uh, their, their pass defense is stellar right now. And uh, I mean, it's gonna give Diggs an issue, which I know no one can cover Diggs, right? I mean, we all saw that the little little salsa he put on uh, Lattimore, I think it was, on uh, Thanksgiving. This man is just good, so I'll expect him to get some stuff, but they're not going to be allowing us to throw. That's our number one asset, and Bill Belichick is known to always take away our number one asset, so we're going to have to run the ball, which the Patriots' defense, when it comes to run defense, not great. Overall, they are 20th in the league, and then in the last three games, they are 26th in the league when it comes to yards allowed from the run game. Now on the Bills offensive side of the ball, our run game hasn't been stellar. So this is not like it's a you know plug and play we're gonna win by just running the ball, but we have to try. We got Brita and Singletary. Uh, let's forget about Moss, but cycle those two in. That's, this is what I'm thinking. We cycle in Brita and Singletary. Stutter them, switch in and out throughout the game, but then figure out who's actually, you know, who wants who wants it more, essentially. If Brita's picking off those 10, 15 yard runs and Singletary's having trouble running up the gut for four yards, give it to Brita. Give somebody, one of these guys after half, like 10 touches, 10 plus touches. I think we need one guy that can do it instead of trying to do a committee kind of deal 
one guy, see who it is. Maybe it's Singletary. If it's Singletary, give him the ball all the time. If it's Brita, give him the ball all the time. You know, I've got no loyalty to any of these players. If they can produce for us, then put them in. Use what works. And this has been an issue for me throughout this whole season. What works is Diggs, and we never throw it to him. I don't know what the deal is, but Diggs works. It's always worked. Throw it to Diggs. All right, Brita's been working. Maybe maybe now our coaches are realizing that he is the answer. Who knows? Now, hopefully, and I think this is the case, we'll have Starlo Tulele back, and we'll have Spencer Brown back. You know, hopefully this is a huge revival of our O-line and it helps Josh out a lot. It's just good to see that our O-line is actually going to get some guys back, Spencer Brown first and foremost. And Josh is just going to have to have a baller game. You know, we got to have to see Savage Josh, you know, waving goodbye to the guys after the game. You know, that kind of Josh. We And I trust him. I trust he knows the magnitude of this game and I trust his competitiveness. I trust his experience under the lights and I trust his abilities overall, everything else, especially uh, compared to Mac Jones. This has got to be a Josh Allen game, along with the run game. The run game will help Josh Allen have his day, but our O-line is really going to determine the whole thing, and it's good to have those two guys back that I mentioned a second ago. So essentially, the offense has really got to step it up, which, speaking of stepping it up, the defense really has to too. Trey White's out. It's like we're playing with 10 guys instead of 11. And here's the deal. The Patriots' offense can run. They're just that running machine. You know, they run the ball, run the ball, and then they give those dink and dunk passes from Mac Jones that is essentially just running the ball. That's what they are. And honestly, this season, we've been good against that kind of game. They don't have any superstars. You know, they don't have a Stefan Diggs. They don't have uh, Emmanuel Sanders, nothing like that. So if, if our corners, Levi Wallace, and uh, Dane Jackson can step up. This is the game to do it. And our safeties will be no problem. I always trust them. This is going to be a big linebacker game, though. Uh, you know, Tremaine Edmonds, maybe A.J. Klein gets in there. It's going to be a big game for them to stop the run. For uh, You know, on the defensive side of the ball, look at the uh, linebackers. And then hopefully our secondary can really just keep up. But if the Patriots get the ball off of one of our turnovers, they're scoring. Just expect it. They take advantage of these kind of things. And we have to do the same thing. You know, we're kind of neck and neck with them in terms of in terms of like takeaways and stuff like that. We're basically a carbon copy. Actually, they're a carbon copy of us. But in the last few games, they have been giving it away. They've been they have a huge turnover differential and it's because they're getting picks and fumbles and all that. But they are turning it over a lot as well. So it's our turn to pull the Patriots card on them and just take advantage of all those interceptions and fumbles that we might get this week um, in, in recent games that's not been the case so hopefully we can take advantage this week and on the coaching side of things mcdermott i mean he's gonna have to balance between like conservatism conservatism and aggression you know we got to go for it on fourth and two which i did like last week we went for it on fourth and two fourth and one stuff like that we got to go for that kind of stuff but mcdermott is a little bit conservative so maybe we kind of need to lean on that a little bit against the patriots we'll see i trust mcdermott i know he's just gotten his mouth punched in a couple weeks prior and he's he's not looking to to lay down against the Patriots that's for sure but yeah I am a ball of nerves for this game and I'm actually quite optimistic I think match this matchup is good for the Bills their their strength is their run game and we have a good run defense so I'm not worried about their passing offense with Trey White out not too worried about that what I am worried about is our offense against their stellar defense we got to be able to slice through them like a hot knife through butter. We got to be able to just be doing back to 2020 form with Josh Allen and the boys. That's what we got to see. But, uh, you know, I can't expect it, but I'm expecting it. I hope we win this game. Absolutely biggest game of all time. I'll be there. It's going to re- it's going to really be a, a determining factor for my sanity for the next week or two. But, hey, that's all I got for you guys today. This has been another episode of Good Neighbor Sports. As always, be good to your neighbors and go Bills.